We have seen in a previous lesson that the critical depth is the depth that maximizes the discharge for a given specific energy or the depth that minimizes the required specific energy for a given discharge. The critical depth is the solution of this equation and we will now see how to calculate it in practice. Let us consider the case of a trapezoidal cross-section as illustrated here. We see in equation 1 that we need to express L and A as functions of the water depth H in order to find the value of the critical depth. These expressions, similar to those we have seen before in the lesson about uniform flow, are given in equations 2 and 3. And after some manipulation, we obtain equation 4, in which we have isolated the highest power of Hc. As Hc also appears in the right-hand side, we see that equation 4 can only be solved by iterations. We will illustrate the process by an example of a trapezoidal cross-section given here. The discharge is 400 cubic meters per second and the bed slope is 1.6 per thousand. The manning friction coefficient of the channel is also indicated here, but it will be useless. We see in the expression for Hc that the critical depth is independent of the friction. Starting the iterations with Hc equal 2 meter, we rapidly converge towards a value of uh, 3.087 meter. For rectangular cross-sections, the expression to calculate the critical depth can be simplified. As the walls are vertical, p equal to 0, and we see in equation 2 that the critical depth can now be calculated directly, without any iterations. An interesting result can be obtained for rectangular cross-sections. We have seen that the critical depth corresponds to the minimum specific energy, that we will call Ec. Using the definition of the specific energy, we can write equation 1, in which the last term here represents the kinetic energy V squared over 2G, indicated here but without, of course, alpha and the square root, both terms being close to 1. Then, using the definition of the critical depth, we can transform the last term of equation 1 as written in equation 3. And we see that it is equal to half of the critical depth. This means that the part of the specific energy corresponding to the kinetic energy at the critical depth is equal to half of uh, Hc, yielding the result finally indicated in equation 4. So, under critical flow conditions, two-thirds of the, the energy is a potential energy and one-third is kinetic energy. This result here will be very useful in some practical applications like the hydraulics of weirs, for example, that will, that will be discussed later. Let us go back to our examples with this trapezoidal channel. We have calculated the normal and critical depths as recalled here. We observe that they are distinct and the question now is how do these two depths vary and according to which parameters? So let us first con uh, consider the influence of the bed slope S0, which is present in both equations. We see S0 in the normal depth equation and S0 here in the critical depth equation. Using these two equations, we can represent the evolution of HU and HC as a function of the bed slope S0. We had already seen that the normal depth varies a lot with the bed slope. And now we can observe that the critical depth remains almost constant, at least in the range of usual bed slopes, for instance, uh, slopes less than 10%. The limited influence of S0 on Hc is logical, as this term here with the square root represents the cosine of the bed slope angle. And as the bed slope angle is small, this value is always close to 1. One interesting observation is that there is a particular slope here 
for which HU and HC are equal. This slope will be referred to as the critical slope, SC, and it will help us classifying the flows. Slopes milder than SC will be called mild slopes. And in this case, the normal depth will be larger than the critical depth. Slopes larger than SC will be called steep slopes and are characterized by the fact that the normal depth is below the critical depth. How can we calculate the value of the critical slope? As we have seen, the critical depth does not vary much with the bed slope. So we can estimate HC using equation 2 with an initial value of S0, for example 0, and then calculate the slope using equation 1. An example is given with the table here for a rectangular cross section of 10 meter width. We can see here the variation of HU and HC and we can identify the range of slopes around which HU becomes lower than HC between S0 equals 0 0.002 and 0 0.005. So if we calculate HC with an initial bed slope equal to 0, we obtain this value of the critical depth with equation 2 and then this value of the critical slope with equation 1, which corresponds to the intersection uh, between the, the two curves HU and, uh, HU and HC. It is important to note that the critical slope depends on the discharge and on the friction coefficient. It is not a fixed geometrical value. We can investigate the dependency of the critical slope to the discharge and to the Manning coefficient using this example in a trapezoidal channel. So we see here the cross section and the channel. We will now check the hydraulic characteristics of this channel. For a discharge of 500 cubic meter per second and a Manning coefficient of 0.025, we can represent HU and HC as a function of S0. And we can see that uh, the critical slope is here around 0.5%, as we can see here in a zoom, a little bit more than 4.5%. Um, to the power 10 minus tr uh, 3, so 0 0.0045. If we now change the discharge, um, so if we now change the discharge to, for example, 1500 cubic meter per second, and if we represent the curve again, we see that the critical uh, slope has changed and the value is now close to 0 0.004, so 0.4%. This influence is of course rather limited, but we see that there is uh, an influence. Let us now go back to the initial value of the discharge, 500 cubic meter per second, and remember um, the critical slope was a little bit below 0 0.005 and we will now change the value of the Manning coefficient. Let's try with 0 0.015 and let's represent HU and HC uh, again as a function of S0. We see that the intersection has uh, changed much more and we now have a critical slope that is between uh, 1.5 and 2 per thousand. So the influence uh, of the Manning coefficient seems to be much more important. In order to better understand the parameters that influence the critical slope, we can apply um, the concept to very wide rectangular channels. 
The analysis presented here is based on the Chazy formulation for the uniform flow, as we see here, but it can be adapted to the Manning formulation. Dividing the Chazy definition equation here, um, definition of HU, by the definition equation of HC, we obtain a relation that is independent of the discharge, or appears to be independent of the discharge Q. Then we can develop the left-hand side of the equation, which reduces finally to the bed slope S0, as tangent and sine coincide for small angles. We can also develop the right-hand side using the property of very wide sections where the hydraulic radius can be approximated by the water depth. So the equality between both relations yields a simple expression of the critical slope that appears here to be independent of the discharge. This relation can also be expressed in terms of the Manning roughness coefficient instead of Chazy coefficient. The hydraulic radius is replaced by the depth, thus by the critical depth here. And the critical depth is recalled here for a rectangular cross-section. So this definition is used to replace HC here. And this leads to the final expression that we see here, that shows that actually the critical slope is depending indeed mainly on the roughness and secondarily on the discharge per unit width, which corresponds to what we have observed in the example. It must be pointed out that this, is, this expression here is interesting for analysis as it allows to identify the parameters that influence the critical slope. But this expression is useless for practical calculations, as it is only valid for very wide sections, much, much wider, in fact, than the common ones. So, to conclude, in this lesson, we have learned how to calculate the critical depth, and we have seen how the concept of critical slope can be used to distinguish between two main types of hydraulic slopes, mild and steep slopes. These will be very useful when we will discuss the water profiles. So, see you in the next lesson.